You better listen to me. Okay? So, this is a joint work between me and Richard. And the story starts in the July 23rd of 1983. An Air Canada flight was departing from Montreal to Edmonton. And there was a slight problem in the cages, so the crew <coughs> used, decided to use a backup system, which required me the manual calculation of the fuel. The calculation went like this. So mass of fuel required divided by the density of the fuel is the volume to be refueled. What's wrong with this? The problem is that at the moment, Canadian was moving from the yard pond system to the metric system. And uh, this happens to be in a kilogram. That happens to be in a pound per liter. And the result interpreted as a liter. What's wrong? The actual computation should be like 22,000 kilograms divided by 0 0.803 kilogram per liter, which should be 27,000 liters instead of 12,000 liter, which correspond to 23, 22,000 pounds. So everyone, including a pilot, co-pilot, and backup computer, believe that they had 22,000 kilograms of fuel, where actually they had 22,000 pounds which is less than half of the amount required to reach Edmonton. The result was an epic emergency landing on top of a family day festival. It was so miraculous that no one was seriously hurt or killed. So the lesson here is that, well, there is a lot of physics and science are going out in the real world. And there is a more than one way to represent this kind of physical equation. On the quantity level, it is a very beautiful law that the mass of the fuel divided by density is the volume. But there is a many ways to represent the combination of the numerical value and the unit. And you cannot just superficially divide the numbers. That's so wrong. That's a mistake that can make airplanes to clash. Um, how do we avoid such mistakes? We're going to type them, right? Because we have Haskell's. So, in order to avoid these kind of mistakes, we scientists routinely check for the units of measure. Um, it's so important, it's so basic, it's so critical that we, it is equivalent of type checking in system program. And I can advance some more thing to that, but this is not just about specific set of units. The quantity can come in an arbitrary set of units, and we have to deal with it. So, if the units are types, then laws of physics are polymorphic. They are polymorphic in units and monomorphic in dimension. Like there is mass divided by density equals the volume can be represented in English units or US units or anything else. So, so what? We have many of these type systems that encode units. C can do it, F sharp, Andrew Kennedy, thank you. Similar link is from NASA, of course Haskell can do it. And of course Haskell has polymorphism, right? So we'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to do this two years ago using this nice unique type library. And this is how it goes. So the upper half is the unit monomorphic version where we have the mass in kilogram, density in kilogram per liter, uh, resulting in volume in liter. Nothing wrong. So we are going to go polymorphic. Remember, laws of physics are monomorphic in dimensions. Yeah. But polymorphic in units. Um, so we are going to just change the types <coughs> into type variables, which unfortunately doesn't compile by itself. Uh, we need type annotations <laughs> to be compiled. So these, these things are saying that first three lines are saying that these variables are unique variables are exactly of that dimensions, belongs to those dimensions. The fourth line introduces a neg unidem variable, which is the negate of the unit of density. And the fifth one does the division. So we all need these five lines to make this, this division, quantity division happen correctly. So if we are going to scale this into more and more physics, it is like on the <laughs> we have to like too much red things. And in fact, that this is like whenever you divide or multiply or add one thing in the quantity level, 
you need one constraint to introduce that variable, another constraint to encode that computation. So it's like quite like writing proofs of computation, like writing one line of value then one page of proof that this quantity computation is correct. And it, it doesn't scale. I was not happy with this. So how are we going to solve this? Call Richard. <laughs> and came up with this unit library. I knew how we can solve this, but I didn't know how to. We, for two years until the closed type family was implemented. And Richard <laughs> told me how to use this. <laughs> Thank you. So this is how a new library went. So the above is the usual level. Uh, maybe usual way to define things in dimensions, units, and numerical values, triples. Our new way to do this is the triple of dimensions, and there is a map from dimensions to units, and numerical values. So this map from <coughs> units, um, um, dimensions to units, encodes the type and the system of units. <coughs> so this upper half encodes the, um, I practice, System do you need the international? System international do you need? Is there any French people? I'm not correct. <laughs> this is the international system unit defined in French, which have a meter as the unit of length, kilogram for mass, second for time, and it can be nicely encoded in the pairs, list of pairs, of types. And the latter half is the centimeter gram second unit system that has been used in the 19th century. Astronomers still use it. So, I want these unit of system to be coherent. Uh, to be coherent means you have some basic sets of units and all the other derived units are, are derived in terms of the direct power and the product of these basic units. So whenever you specify a unit system of units, you have unique unit for each dimension. Like Joule, is kilogram divided by meter squared per second squared is the coherent unit in the system of international. While an L is the 10 to the minus seventh of the joule, is the gram divided by centimeter squared per second squared is the coherent, the coherent unit of energy in the CGS system. So this coherency of the system we will need enables one-to-one -one mapping between the dimensions of units. So instead of just saying that we are going to divide 23,000 kilograms by 800 kilograms per meter, square cubic meter, we can just say that we forget about any units and we are dividing SI mass by SI density to get SI volume. These computation, computations are essentially non-dimensionalized so that we can just superficially divide numbers. I said before that superficially dividing numbers are a mistake, but that is a mistake in case of coherent system of units. So, what do we have now? There is, um, this is a new form, this is new program, our version of program that computa computes the amount of fuel to be refueled. Um, this takes only one variable. This is, a low, this is a the coherent system we need local to this portion of the computation in which we are going to compute. And since this is a coherent system we need, computation is non-dimensionalized, we can just superficially divide numbers. We don't need any more information to perform this quantity computation. So compare this, before and after. So before this problem had many variables and many constraints. In essence, we found a way to transform this multivariable, multi-constraint problem into a single free variable problem. And this variable happened to be of the kind of local coherent system of units. There is a funny application for this. <laughs> yeah. Suppose you are a student in chemist, not in Haskell, and you are going to have this exam. So computer van der Waals force, no, Leonard Jones force between the two album atom at the distance of four ohms. Uh, you have the formula. And you are going to encode this and compute this. 
with the concrete value in the system international. And you get this answer, which is not present, but it is usual in the numerical science. This is because that you have the powers up to 13, and uh, you're going to do this in the flow, single precision float, uh, because you want it this bit fast. And uh, 10 to the minus 8 to the power of 6 is already out of the scope of the single precision. So what are you going to do? Well, for, you got for this task, you get some chemistry unit which is a customized unit for chemists, so you would use angstrom as a lens, proton mass as a mass, <laughs> and picosecond as a time, and the same program with just unit changed would return the correct answer. That's good. So we went on to more further, more practical, so we wrote a 27-page paper on the lightning on the other planets, and this is written in Haskell. So Haskell can do all these quantitative reasoning powered by this unit type I, I bought some time so that I can see it. I can do the lightning one. Let me see. Oh, OK. Still eight minutes do I have? Yeah? So this is a part of that 27-page paper that concludes that uh, there is a three model of lightning which each specifies these kind of critical voltage above which the lightning takes place on the Earth. And so that um, there is a 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon in our atmosphere. And if you change our atmosphere to more argon rich, like 16% nitrogen and 40% argon, you can do this. And Haskell is going to uh, figure uh, about these, all these, okay, gas. He is now thinking about the model of the gas. And it takes several minutes, so I can go just go to the results. <laughs> <and> uh, <laughs> the result is out of the atmosphere. So instead of 30 kilovolt limit, we have some 20, 20 kilovolt limit. Now Haskell can do physics. <laughs> so. Uh, there, are, ha, there have been many type systems that encode units, but please consider unit polymorphism when you do your own, because with unit polymorphism, most beautifully we can faithfully express the physics of nature, that these natures, laws of physics, are not dependent on a specific set of units. It's more, so something more abstract, and we want to be abstract, right? And uh, with this abstraction, we get the freedom to choose unit. We are not stick to just stuck to the specific like SI unit. Because we are not stuck to a specific set of units, we have the freedom to avoid overflow. When you are doing chemistry, you would like to use small units. We are doing the astronomy, you are going to use the larger set of units, like parsec and mega years and the solar mass. And there is an easy way to do this. You can take the system of unit as a single free variable. So, and there's a lot more thing to do in the paper. We can add whatever unit you would like. So, for example, if you are in the management, you would like to have man as a unit and hour as a unit. So you have a man month as a unit of labor, and so on. <laughs> you, we have various combinators, and we still protect people from directly. Uh, mocking with the numerical budget. So every computation is protected. We don't export our constructor so that the unit computation can't go wrong. And things came, after the paper, even more clever things that came out. So we have now template Haskell to convert the human readable unit notation into our types, and so on. So Haskell is such a cool language that before, just before we saw that we can encode set in a type system. <laughs> now we have a map from term to term, that's a dimension to unit, and also uh, unit to the power. So this is a map of terms to integer, type level integer, and we can add and multiply these maps. So cool. Um, we would like to thank all the people <laughs> that contributed to bring the computer science and Haskell to this stage of Haskell now understanding quantity computation.
<laughs> and I wish your flight back to your country doesn't run out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so thanks, thanks for a great talk. That was really inspiring. So I wonder, uh, in practice, if you want to combine uh, computations that you already have done using one uh, unit system with computation, hello, yes, <laughs> with computation that you did with another unit system. Uh, so it, so after you already monomorphize the thing, is that is that possible, or do you have to keep everything polymorphic until you produce the final value that you are interested in? No. Let me go to the um, very well, there is a uh, like nice example, 88 mile power. So this is uh, there you see. So this is the polymorphic in the middle, but not in the interface. So taking in the concrete units, where you take in the concrete units and you emit the uh, concrete unit con quantities, you need actual units, right? And this is the there is the moment where you have that convert unit. Okay, so if you want to integrate that result, the 39.33, that, that particular value, and I'm going to use the, uh, uh, parsecs per light, no, year, I don't know. <laughs> uh, is that possible? Yes, it, it is possible. Well, in this case, the, we have to choose the SI as the internal unit, right? The 88 miles power is the interface to the outer world. Yeah, but so suppose there some computation is needed to produce a 39 answer. Yeah. And now I want, oh, I say I don't want to have I saw you, so I want something else. I yeah. have to redo that computation. Or can I reuse the value? You can use that. Um, I mean, there is, a, there is a polymorphic function that switch over the uh, unit system, mm -hmm. and also you can emit your internal representation in whatever concrete unit okay. you would like. That's what I was asking. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so maybe I'm, I missed this. You wanted to show, show your, your kind of final slide, but the one with the divide on it. Uh, I know. So, right. uh, okay. and, and, and anything that involved that divide. Oh. Right. So there's. Uh, so uh, you've stressed polymorphism in the unit system. Yes. Right. That's this alpha. Yes. But of course, in Andrew's paper, Andrew Kennedy's papers, he also stressed polymorphism in the uh, the, de the dimensions. So yes. So uh, did you ever show us the type of this divide operator? In type of glory, because then it'll divide. This divides mass by density to give volume. Yeah, but you can divide other things, so it must have a lot of polymorphic type. Hmm. And what? Type, so what is type? Well, may I show you the, to the source code? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you show me my slide? Yeah, I missed it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I didn't show you this. Okay, okay. Wait, where? <laughs> okay, so I go to the language. Uh, what is the question? What's the type of divide? Right, which has to be polymorphic in the dimensions that it's dividing. I guess. Yeah, I guess. It which are, do you know where it is? Uh, <laughs> probably under QU.HS. Ah. Yes, it is. I'm already starting to do great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Simon, can you read it? Okay. Bigger? You make it larger, please. Uh, oh, there you are. Oh. <laughs> All right, so there's this normalized thing with this. Yeah. yeah. So they are doing the normalized on the maps. So this is the first term, this is the second term, and this is the normalization going on in the time engine. And the unit system doesn't change within these kind of computations. So, so uh, and, and, and then Andrew Kennedy had quite a lot about what, how normalized works. When you, if you write f equals a times b divided by c, you do yes. lots of normalized. Do, do, that, that all happens in your library, does it? What kind of problem did happen? So supposing I fixed L, or maybe I just, I, I just have a uniform L. Yes. But I'm wanting to do lots of combinations of mass and but, but I, I'm just writing a times b divided by c yes. plus d, right? So and then there's so, so if you you have going to have a lot of calls of normalized building up, yeah, right. Well, so so, so you're, the types of a just a, 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 a simple looking arithmetic program would yes. get very large. Is that right? Well, it takes several minutes to compile, but it is, it does compile. <laughs> oh, I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would show, of course, you know. Well, <laughs> so you pay, paying my dinner, right? But, well, this <laughs> <is> <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you were complaining at the beginning that the types get big, right? You should yeah. have the very first slide, so these big types. 
You know, that was the old library, right? Yeah. Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. um, the, the moral has get things to become small again. So, I mean, I, I guess if you had something that was really polymorphic in a lot of, in, in, in sort of all of its dimensions, sure. it would get a large type. But, uh, I mean, at least our experiments never sort of encountered that in practice. Well, the size of this map is restricted to the uh, kinds of numbers of kinds of dimensions you would use. So, if you are using SI system, you are up to seven elements in the map. Right. So, I had a question, but Simon already asked it. So, instead, I'll give you an answer. Um, <laughs> yesterday, I asked Stephanie, why on earth would you be going to put all this dependently typed stuff into Pascal? Yeah. You've answered it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so this this is an extremely nice library, and, and it's very 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 clever. But as as we've seen, there's some sort of quite complex types that arise, and the, the type checking takes a long time. Could you maybe compare sort of how you think this? This goes in comparison to an implementation like in F sharps, where you you build in some of the constraints of the compiler, mm -hmm. um, but at, at the same time that um, simplifies matters quite a lot for the, the user. user I have tried F sharp, and well, one point really really good about F sharp is that error message is quite readable. <laughs> <laughs> this emits the half view and uh, monodimensional mono integers and so on. So. So built-in is a near, surely an alternative. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew. Hi. So very nice talk. I'm afraid I missed the beginning, so I hope I can look at the slides. Um, so following on from Simon's question, I guess another way of looking at it is, uh, so for F-sharp, it, um, it makes use of constraint solving, you know, ah. which is in, it's essentially doing gas and elimination. Hmm. So in order to get a most general type, in, in all situations. So, does, is your system doing that through Haskell's I don't know. Solver? Well, it, well it, this Haskell this type system is so rich that it superficially looks like value level automatic, and I know nothing further about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a estimate. You don't need um, Gaussian elimination. You are going to just do adding and multiplication. Yes, but to, to infer a polymorphic type um, in units is essentially turning the exponents on the units oh, into an equation in well. The polymorphism is over L, and L can be anything. Yeah, sure. It can be int, because it is non-dimensionalized, and you don't need any detail about this polymorphic variable. I guess I should try some examples. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take one more. Um, uh, so maybe I'd, I'd need to play with it and read the paper. Um, but one thing that, uh, say, like F sharp lets you, or stops you doing, is yes. adding, I think it stops you doing, uh, adding things together with the wrong units. So like yeah. adding meters and kilograms, or adding maybe even meters and centimeters. Yes. Um, does, is, that, is that encoded in your system as well? This is safe in our system because we are in the coherent unit system of unit, everything is non dimensionalized. There is only one possible unit for the length and everything else. Oh, okay, yes. Right, that, that helps me understand it more, actually. Yeah, okay, thanks. Take the speaker one more time.